ओके सो वी आर रीडिंग इलेवेंथ चैप्टर फिफ्टी वन वर्ड्स अर्जुन वाच मानुषम रूपम तब सौम्यम जनार्दन इदानीम अस्मी संवृत्ता ओरिजिनल नेचर Okay, I'll just explain. That's all. Oh my God, not the more and the same. God, not just the same. Chakshuram le tamhe na tasmay shivam. Shivam baat ki. So uh, this is a chapter where Arjuna is. I think I have to. Arjuna is speaking that uh, he he first saw universal form of Krishna. Krishna showed his universal form, and uh, Arjuna was very fearful. Uh, he actually was scared a lot. The whole point is sometimes you can be scared of God if you see his absolute power. that's the whole point there when god reveals his power the living entity feels can feel worthless and humble and that's what uh, devotion is all about when living entity faces god's power and his opulences he automatically becomes humble and that's how you truly become humble that's the way to become humble many devotees they can be humble externally but internal humbleness is very different and that comes when you come near god or god comes near you with all his power and opulences so the more we realize absolute truth the more the living entity becomes humble and arjuna he faced he saw krishna and he became really fearful of krishna and he requested him krishna i please please i don't want to see your power i want to see your sweetness because devotees are more interested in sweetness of god rather than his power and opulence of course his power and opulence is also sweet but his sweetness is more sweet so as devotees we are interested to meditate on his his sweet form of two handed form which arjuna is actually requested him and krishna showed him two handed form which is very pleasing to the devotees and it is said when arjuna saw krishna in his original form which is by the way his original form krishna exists in so many forms in 400 forms in 800 forms in 1000 handed forms there was an incarnation ajit when there was samudra mantan and there was churning of the ocean so vishnu came in thousand handed form and then there's a universal form where there was lakhs of faces millions of hands millions of legs i mean to say if you see a person with millions of legs millions of hands definitely you'll become scared of so arjuna said krishna i want to see your original form and krishna showed his original form and arjuna is saying oh janardan seeing this human like form so very beautiful i am now composed in my mind so technically the definition of god in vishnu purana is we all know aishwara se samagra se virya se shriya gyana vairagesha naam bhagavati gana god has six opulences we all know all all Aish, aishwara means all opulence Ashwarya Samagra, all famous, all beauty, all knowledge, all renunciation. 
He's complete in all of this. All strength. But out of these six qualities, which is the most important one? Well, uh, one of the most important, one of the most important qualities out of these six is all renunciation. He's completely detached from everything. He has all beauty, but he's completely detached from it. He has all riches, but he is completely detached from it. He has all knowledge, but completely detached. This is almost impossible to do for any human. As humans, as mortals, it is said, as humans, when humans possess even a little knowledge, they start condescending others. Condescending? Do you know, do you know condescending? Condescending means putting others down. And that's the nature of human. When we get good qualities by the grace of God, what happens is uh, humans become pride, proud. But it doesn't happen with God. God is full of all good qualities. Sarva kalyanamai ka gunai ka sagar. But he doesn't become proud of that. In fact, when we come in, in this temple and we take darshan of Krishna, we are thinking, oh my Lord, give me mercy. But what he is thinking, that's more important. And he is not thinking, okay, I will give mercy to this devotee. He doesn't think like that. He is thinking, oh, he is asking me for his mercy and I am obliged. In his mind, he thinks like that. Because he is humble of humblest. So he thinks, okay, he is asking me a favor. Let me serve him. From his perspective, he is serving us. From our perspective, we are, we are asking for mercy. That's how it goes. So Arjuna has asked uh, Krishna, Krishna, please show your, your human-like form. Krishna is thinking, okay, my devotee wants to see me in this form and it's my duty to show myself in this form. That is why it is said, by the way, in scriptures, why does Krishna take so many incarnations? Vamandev, Matse, Varaha, Narsing. Why so many incarnations? Why isn't there just one form? That's all. Why? Because the answer is because Krishna has millions of devotees and those devotees want to see Krishna in various forms. Some devotees want to see Krishna's power. Some devotees want to see Krishna's cleverness. Some devotees want to see Krishna's uh, humor. So Krishna takes many forms. That's all. It's it's simple. It's like it's like suppose suppose you have a hero. Now, so you want to see your hero in various movies. Am I right? If that hero sometimes he becomes comedian, you like. Sometimes that hero becomes a villain, okay. Sometimes he becomes a serious role. You might like some role and some lo some roles you might like less, some roles you might like more. All right? It's like that. It's similarly with God. That's all. So Arjuna is such a devotee. Uh, he is addicted to the two-handed form of God. Why? Because in that form, Krishna is very happy. That's how it goes. When Krishna exhibits his power, he is not happy. But when he exhibits his sweetness, he is very, very happy. And what's, what's the aim of a devotee? The aim of a devotee is to see his Lord perfectly satisfied. Srila Prabhupada says in his book. Srila Prabhupada says, the aim of devotee is to see that Krishna is satisfied in all respects. So that's, that's a servant. A servant wants to see his master happy, that's all. That's nothing. You know what's one, one devotee, one person he came and he asked, he asked us, he asked me that if I do devotion of Krishna, what will I get? What's the benefit, by the way? What's the benefit? People, people talk in benefit. So, so I, so I told, well, you know, the benefit of doing devotion to Krishna is you'll become dear to him. Then he asked, no, no, actually I want to know the benefit. <laughs> you see the point. Then I asked, you know, what do you do? He was a businessman. So you see businessman, he was thinking in terms of money. <laughs> but the whole idea is, why we are doing devotion? Uh, we are doing devotion so that we can see a smile on the face of God. That's all. And that's the point I was telling the other day. 
that when you when you come in the temple uh, krishna is smiling krishna is happy but the whole point is is he happy with us or not in himself he is a happy person and that's what scripture says scripture says raso vahi saha rasa rasam yeva ayam lagbhanandi bhakti in scripture it is said krishna is full of bliss he is happy so when you see in the altar he is happy he is he is he looks happy he doesn't look sad am i right but the whole idea is not that he is only happy the idea is whether he is happy with me or not that's the whole idea otherwise otherwise you don't make a relationship with him so that's that's devotion all about devotion is all about to to know whether krishna is really happy with me or not or devotion is all about to act in a way to think in a way and to serve him in a way that he becomes happy with us that we can provide him happiness that's devotion all about it's an art it's an art of it's an art of karmana manasa giram of action thoughts and words to to act or behave in such a way so that krishna becomes happy that's all that's the whole idea devotion is not just a ritualistic process that's very different rituals are different and devotion is different just like just like for example now we'll offer lamps to krishna the damodar ashtakam well I, i mean to say so many people come ordinary new people also come they offer lamps that's good but but if they don't understand what they are doing then it's a ritual just like in just like in other hindu temples you go and there also they might be offering lamps and candles oh act- actually i was there in canada now uh, yesterday montreal and there was a church in canada uh, st joseph's church so it's a famous church so we went and saw that so in that church they have this tradition of offering candle you know that they light the candles and there so many candles and they ask for a wish so it's a same now, now so many people are coming asking for the wish so what they're doing we, we we also light the candle but it's very different for them their attitude is a ritual so that's the difference between a ritual and devotion ritual is all about doing something for god what you want to do that's all finish Okay, we have to light a candle. We have to do some puja, a, a, a lamp. Okay, it's done, and you are happy. You have done that. Simply by completing the process, you become happy. That is a ritual. But devotion is not that. Devotion is not that we we finish the process and it becomes devotion. No, devotion is what you are thinking while you are doing. What's your attitude while you are offering the lamp? That's what Krishna wants to see. Shila Prabhupad was there, and I think in Vrindavan, and when Mata Ji was offering, while he was giving lecture, like I am giving lecture, and there was offering going in the altar, so she went and she was offering, and Prabhupad on the mic she he told she was just offering mantras, Namam Vishnu Pada and something, on the mic, and then suddenly Prabhupad Prabhupad says, where is the mood? That's what Prabhupad said, and she was like. and that's the whole idea all about devotion devotion is the art of cultivating the mood of krishna consciousness it is not krishna activity it is krishna consciousness everything is here prabhupada said many times in his conversations that devotees are making temple devotees are making book book doing book distribution very nice it has to be done but prabhupada said that if you don't do in a proper attitude in a proper consciousness it becomes very mechanical even chanting so many people chant in india everybody chants and not now not the generation but my grandmother's generation everybody chanting so are they devotees no not necessarily they are not devotees in christianity so many people chant mary mary virgin mary they, they chant on the on the on the beads so they chant are they devotees not necessarily who knows so who is a devotee that's the question and another the more important question is how do we recognize who is a devotee and is not a devotee that's a more important question 
even more important question is are we doing devotion or not who knows maybe we are trapped in a process so that's the whole idea a devotee the mark of a devotee is he is never satisfied a mark of a non devotee is he is satisfied by following a process that's what goes simple and that's what is happening in this verse uh, a non devotee if he if he chants if he if he comes in the temple if he offers lamp he is happy okay i have finished my thing and i'm satisfied okay we, so how many people come to temple i'm right so many people come to temple they come and they okay we visit we visit temple every week and it's nice it's okay we are done we are not done that's the whole idea you're not done because you don't know whether god is happy with you or not he might be happy but the whole point is it's not just to make him happy it's to make him completely happy that's the whole point so devotion is all about yeah that's a dev- devotee is not satisfied devotee is satisfied when it comes to material material things that's okay when it comes to spiritual we are not satisfied so we offer one lamp to krishna uh, when when a devotee offers a lamp to krishna what he thinks he thinks oh my lord give me the power to offer millions of lamps to you for millions of lives that's what a devotee is thinking what a person who is not a devotee he already thinks okay one lamp and okay finish enough by the way that's what acharyas are saying what vishnu chakra thakur is saying when he sees krishna we see krishna what vishwanath is saying he when he sees krishna he says oh my lord give me millions of eyes i am not satisfied by seeing you this, by this two eyes i am not i am not satisfied i am in fact sad that i have only two eyes when devotees chant when vishwanath and narottam and these devotees used to chant great devotees they were saying we are not satisfied by having two ears they are insufficient i want millions of ears and i am not even satisfied by having millions of ears on this body because on one body how many ears you can fit so i want millions of body with millions of ears that's the prayer of devotees now what's happening what is happening is they are unsatisfied they are not satisfied with serving krishna that's the mark of a devotee so and the the mark of a master is he is not satisfied extending his mercy and that's how it goes so arjuna is, arjuna is actually doing the same thing arjuna is saying uh, drishtvaidam manusham rupam arjuna says drishtvaidam manusham rupam he says drishtva means to see idam means this form manusham means manusham word is very important they have the word manusham generally you might say it means human but manusham doesn't means human human means manushya manushya means human like form that's all so he says oh my lord i am seeing a human like form there is another verse in gita avajananti mamuda manushim tanumashritam you see so krishna is looks like a human but he is not a human that's the whole point now you might say why is not like a human it's simple to understand his um, our body is made of flesh bones blood uh, sun god's body is made of fire uh, sea god's body is made of water brahma's body is made of sound what do you say of that and god's body is made of what can i tell what's god's body made of you know what's it made of spiritual is a term sachitana no bless raso vaisa now how do you make a body out of bless we don't know we have no idea we don't know how to make a body make a body out of enjoyment what's radharani's body made of mercy so how do you make a form out of mercy we have 
एब्सोल्युटली नो आइडिया व्हेन वी ड्रीम व्हेन वी ड्रीम एवरी नाइट वी सी सो मेनी थिंग्स नो दोज ड्रीमिंग इन ड्रीम व्हाट दोज ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर मेड ऑफ योर थॉट्स दैट्स व्हाट जय तीर्थ सेज देयर इज अ कमेंडेटर ही सेज इन ड्रीम्स यू माइट सी अ लायन यू माइट सी सो मेनी थिंग्स व्हाट इज दैट दोज थिंग्स मेड ऑफ अर्थ व्हाट ऑफ एयर आर इथर नो नो दे मेड ऑफ योर थॉट्स God has a power to make objects out of thoughts and those are real objects by the way when you are dreaming it's not illusion when you are dreaming it's not illusion it's not hallucination you are really in some other world you're disconnected from the body and in the world this world god made of earth water air fire ether that dreaming world he makes out of thoughts and that is why you have real experience there all right in dreams you feel it's a reality you don't feel it's a illusion so dream by the way is a reality but it's a temporary reality this is also reality but this is uh this is temporary but it is for longer time dream is also temporary but it's for short time that that's the only difference so uh krishna arjuna says drishtvayva manusham rupam i am seeing this human like form uh if you if you touch krishna your your hand might go your your hand might just cross him that's all is because body because boy's body is made of bliss this uh, the devarshi narad he went he actually in one purana it is said he goes to some i think he goes to ravan to meet him and ravan said okay capture this they were shinara then let's kill him they were shinara is laughing he says you can't capture me it's impossible so ravan then people are shooting arrows and arrows were like going through him is what's happening he says well you know my body is spiritual you can't touch it nothing can touch it if body is of such liberated souls are like that you can imagine what what's happening with god uh, that's what krishna is So he says, दृष्टवैव मानुषम रूपम तव सौम्यम जनार्दन तव मीन्स योर्स एंड सौम्यम मीन्स दिस वेरी ब्यूटिफुल फॉर्म एंड शीला प्रभुपा प्रभुपा राइट्स हेयर प्रभुपा राइट्स हेयर दैट एक्चुअली अ डिवोट इज बिजनेस इन वन ऑफ द पर्पज लेटर अ डिवोट इज बिजनेस इज टू फोकस ऑन दिस टू हैंड्रेड फॉर्म ऑफ कृष्णा विच इज इन वृंदावन दैट्स वॉट वी आर डूइंग there are so many forms of lord but as a devotee we are more interested in this form of krishna you know why it's not because it is our interest it is because in that form krishna is very happy as lord ram now ram chandra is here as lord ram as lord ram that's one of the incarnation of god that's okay uh, but we are more interested in shyam sundar form because as as lord ram he is not that happy when he is acting as krishna because in the in the form of ram his mood is restricted you see he cannot enjoy all kind of rasas as lord ram he has one wife sita devi but as krishna he has many gopis so it's a very different kind of as lord ram he is a very serious personality But the Diwali is going to come. There is a comparison between Ram and Krishna. He is very serious. He doesn't generally do comedy or humor. But as Krishna, he he is he is humorous. He can do comedy. He can be at the same time very serious. He can be both. So as in the form of Krishna, he enjoys many moods, many flavors, many tastes. In form of Ram, it's very restricted. So as a servant of God, we want to see a master enjoying all tastes. and all rasas and that is why arjuna says i am so happy to see tava samyam samyam means this very beautiful form janardana 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 means this form of yours jana means uh, jana means uh, public people ardana means to please you very this form which pleases everybody and then he says idanim asmi samritah he says now सम समृत मीन्स सेटल्ड मै माइंड इज पीसफुल समृत सम मीन्स कंप्लीटली वृत्त मीन्स मै हार्ट मै हार्ट इज कंप्लीटली सेटल्ड आई वॉज सो डिस्टर्ब बाय सींग योर यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म 
just like just like Prahlad was very disturbed by seeing the form of Lord Narasimha. It was very scary, very fearful form. But uh, Prahlad says, now I am happy. When Lord Narasimha became peaceful and by the way afterwards he revealed his Narayana form in Vishnu Puran, he was very settled. He says, now I am very settled. Uh, and sa cheta prakartim gata. And in my consciousness, sa cheta means my consciousness. In my mind, your this two-handed form is impressed for eternity. Sa cheta. Cheta means heart. In my heart, my whole prayer is that if I can remember this two-handed form, I'll be very happy. That's what a devotee wants. For a devotee, remembrance of God is a festival. That's all. Ram Samhita says, that's what we want, that's all. We want to remember Him. And He wants to remember us. That's called love. That's what is relationship all about. Nobody demands anything more in a loving relationship than simply that you please remember me. Please keep me in your mind. Am I? That's love. Anything else? No, nothing else. Like for example, a mother is separated from the child. Suppose, suppose the child is in America and the mother calls the child. What she will say? What she will ask? Do you remember me? First she'll ask, do you want anything? That's the first thing she, he'll ask, definitely. Even if that child is 40 years old or 50 years old, he's a man. Still the first statement is, do you want anything? And the next statement is, oh, do you remember me? Or that the person will ask, mama, do you remember me? Yes, yes, I remember you. That's the whole thing. Uh, so that's what Arjuna is saying. Sa Chetaha. Uh, oh Krishna, I'm so happy that you have revealed yourself in such a beautiful form that we can remember you. And that's one reason why Krishna does so many beautiful pastimes. He does pastimes so that we can remember him. Uh, so that we can remember him, we can glorify him. Sacheta prakritim gataha. Prakritim gata. Gata means I have achieved. Prakritim means my nature. I am again peaceful. I am again happy by seeing your form. And uh, oh, we have to finish here. Okay, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you.